Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this final video, we're going to put together a couple of odds and ends before calling it a day. I hope you've enjoyed this series, and I hope you're getting a lot out of it. So let's jump in. In the last video, we created a way to create as many piles as we wanted with an even number of rings in each pile. Of course, this might not give you the effect you're looking for, so instead, let's give it a random number of rings in each pile. Because we're using the index to drive our modulo, the rings are placed sequentially. So instead of taking the modulo of a sequential number, we took the modulo of a random integer, we would get a different number for each ring that isn't sequential. So I'm gonna delete my index node, and I'm gonna add a random value node. I'll change the mode to integer. We want our maximum to be some number larger than the number of piles. In this case, we'll leave it at 100. We'll take our value and plug that into our modulo. We can adjust this maximum number and our seed to get some different results. So because our modulo is constraining our numbers from zero to our number of piles minus one, we could just replace this with our random value node. And then use the number of piles as our maximum. You will notice, however, that we now have six piles and our piles was set at five. That's because our random values that are being generated are inclusive of both the zero and the five. So we simply want to subtract one from this to make these match up. So once again, our number of piles accurately controls our tree. Also, so that you can keep control of all of your random values, you could drag the seed for your piles to your input. Make sure if you have multiple seed values on your input that you label them accordingly. One last tidbit that I want to give you relates back to our scaling of our incoming object. Here we took our bounding box and used a few nodes to determine the height of our incoming object. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the bounding box and these math nodes. I'm not going to select the divide node because that wasn't part of finding the height and I'm going to press Ctrl G. I'm going to take my bounding box and pull it over to the group output and move that to the top. I'm now going to duplicate my subtract and absolute nodes twice. I'll plug these into the output as well and move my Z down. I'll go ahead and rename these to X, Y, and Z size. And then I'll plug in the outputs from my separate XYZ to these as well. So my X's go to the top, my Y's go to the middle, and my Z's will stay on the bottom. Finally, I'm going to take the minimum and the maximum and bring those over as well to the output. So now this node will take a geometry input and output its bounding box min and max in addition to the X, Y, and Z size of that object. If I tab out, I'm gonna rename this to bounding box plus plus. I'm gonna hit the shield button. So now I could always come back and append this node tree into future projects and use it as a replacement for my bounding box node. I hope that's helpful. So I hope this series has been helpful. I hope you've picked up a few tips along the way and I hope it inspires you to create something really cool with the new Accumulate Field node. If you do, be sure to tag me on Twitter, at Johnny Gizmo. So anyway, I've had fun putting this together, and I hope you've had as much fun watching it. So until next time, I'll catch you later.